MMA Fight Corner. On the line, too, and, and we're actually really surprised, absolutely very lucky uh, to get this interview with Josh Thompson. Josh, thanks for joining us on the show today. How are you, man? Good, man. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Thank you for joining us, Fantastic. man. Fantastic. And ha- Happy New Year, too, by the way. Oh, Happy New Year to you guys. It sounds like you guys had a good interview with Luke. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's always good with Luke. Now, now you, now that Luke was on, he did such a good job. I know you got, you got big <laughs> shoes to fill. The pressure's on you, Josh. I'm not even tripping. All he did was talk about himself. I guess. <laughs> you, you know him so well. Well, but we also did talk about his famous uh, father and, and, you know, his brothers and how they also, you know, like uh, really pushed each other through various forms of athletic competition, including ping pong. And fought okay. over the last slice of pizza in the kitchen. That's right. You knew when he came up he was going to have to step up his game, otherwise he'd be left on the, the bench somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. And, and you know what? You've actually you've got some big stuff coming up here, too, my friend. You're uh, expected to face Benson Henderson coming up January 25th on UFC on Fox 10. Uh, tell us real quick, how excited are you about this fight? You know, and really looking at Benson, where do you see a weakness that you can really exploit in the game? Uh, you know, realistically, he doesn't really have any. I mean, he's very well-rounded. If you look at the, the lightweight division, a lot of guys are good at either stand-up or grappling or, one, you know, one or the other. But none of them are really as well-rounded as, as he is. I mean, that, that would explain why he's been the champion for so long, you know, why he was the champion for so long. So, um, you know, i, I got to say, like, I mean, there's, there was Frankie Edgar who was real well, round, uh, well-rounded. You know, there's Benson. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's other guys in there that are really good. I mean, they're all a lot of them are really good. It's a matter of how they put it together, and he puts it together really well. And he also poses a threat because he's left-handed. You know, that's just a, everything comes from a different angle, comes from you know the opposite side. So you just got to work. A, you spend your whole camp kind of working on that. But mm-hmm. um, really, to be honest, to exploit him, I think it's just going to be a little matter of like inches here and there. I'm going to have to beat him in certain areas. I feel like I'm a better grappler. He's probably a little bit better wrestler. I feel like my stand-up's better than his. And uh, he probably hits harder. So <laughs> um, it's going to be we're, – we're really just cutting straws, but it's going to be a good fight, man. You know, uh, you're, you're originally scheduled to take on Anthony Pettis, uh, but preview to that, you, you faced Nate Diaz. And one of the wow. things you talk, talked about uh, with Benson Henderson was him being a southpaw. Coming off of a whole camp, you know, for Nate Diaz where you had to fight a great southpaw striker, a great southpaw grappler, do you feel that kind of gave you extra uh, insight, you know, extra experience in, in having to deal with another southpaw like Ben Henderson? No, not really. Only because they're completely different fighters. Uh, you know, you know, with Nate, you just know what he's gonna do. He's gonna come forward. He's gonna throw his, you know, he's gonna throw his little loopy like right hook, and then he's gonna try and lead you into his left hand. Um, the takedowns really aren't so much a factor. Uh, you know, he's got good grappling, but if you can stop his takedown, then you're good. With Benson, though, you've got to be worried about everything. His punches will come from different angles. He kicks a lot, so you, you can't really dip your head any way left or right. You know, there's a lot of things that you got to be concerned about. Uh, not to mention does he kick a lot, but I mean he's really good against the fence. If he gets double wonders, if he gets if he presses you against the fence, the odds of you getting taken down are pretty good. How, so um, okay. so he, he's pretty impressive, man. How much have you at all analyzed any of the tape from the two Pettis losses that Benson had as a blueprint to, uh, going into this fight, if at all? Uh, I haven't really at all. I mean, I watched the last one a little bit to kind of see what he do, you know what he was doing with uh, Pettis against the fence. You notice how he does like little things that he kicks your legs, kicks your calf, kind of he'll strike your, your thigh, things like that. Um, you know, those are just the little things that I was trying to get a feel for. We're working on some things, you know, for those type of situations. But, um, other than that, not really. I, I really paid attention more or less to the Gilbert fight because that was the most recent one. The old Pettis fight, I didn't watch at all. Uh, it's been so long. He's changed so much as a fighter. That was his last loss until he lost to Pettis again. Right. So, um, there, you know, he's changed so much since that, since that fight. I really just watched, um, I watched a little bit of the Nate fight that he did. You know, uh, it was kind of one sided, so I didn't really bother watching a whole lot of it. Uh, but then I really watched the, I watched the Gilbert fight the most. You mentioned the late kicks of Benson Henderson, and, and, and he, he, he viciously, you know, just launches those kicks. He kicks the calf. He kicks the low part of the foot. You know, he kicks all over that leg. Uh, he yeah. did a great job of using those against Frankie Edgar. Um, and, and coming off this last weekend's, you know, bizarre, nasty finish of Anderson Silva breaking his bone, uh, you know, a southpaw striker versus an orthodox striker breaking his bone off a check kick. Do you think Benson is going to be more apprehensive to throw those leg kicks? And are you looking to maybe employ that same tactic uh, that Chris Weidman used, where it's kind of like that that knee check to to drive into the shin bone? Uh, you know, 
honestly, like I've always worked on trying to check kicks. So whether it was Benson or anybody else, I've always worked on trying to check them. You know, um, you you worry about them sometimes a little bit more than normal uh, throughout your camp when you're fighting somebody like Benson. So I've, I've obviously I've planned for them a little bit more. I've trained for them a little bit more. I've worked with a little bit more kickboxers. Um, but no, not really. I mean, I don't think he's gonna be apprehensive at all. He, he's somebody that I think he's got his game plan in his head. He kind of fights the same way every time. He just gets a little bit better in every area, you know, each fight. So, no, I don't, I don't think he's going to be apprehensive at all after watching the Anderson fight. I, I also I've, I had a chance to hang out with him in uh, Chicago with Benson and uh, when we were doing the PR for the fight. Man, he's got, and everyone knows, he's got short, stumpy legs. Big, <laughs> tree trunks. Thick bone, tree trunks. Like, his calves are huge. He's got Flintstone feet. There's no, <laughs> way that, there's no way that that is happening to his legs. He got yabba dabba do toes. No. Nope. <laughs> hey, uh, you said you've always worked on the checking uh, of leg kicks, um, and a lot. I see a lot of kickboxers that teach you know shin to shin, turn the shin out, meet to the shin bone. But the, the one Chris Weidman did was was you know Ray Longo. He said specifically taught him to use that knee to drive in the shin bone. Uh, how do you check a kick? Uh, it's a little different. I think you're misunderstanding kind of what Ray's talking about. On the inside kick, you're really just going to use your knee to check it, and. On the outside, you really want to try and use the, the lower, like the upper part of your shin, like right below the knee, I guess you'd say, for the outside leg check. Um, it's, it's just a difference. Like with the inside, you're really just turning your foot in, kind of just turning your knee in, you know, because it's really, there, it's hard to explain, but there's really no room for them to get their foot inside on the leg kick. So if you just turn, you lift up on your toes a little bit and turn them in, the odds of it sliding up and hitting you in the groin are pretty good unless they hit the knee. So you're you're kind of leading them into 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 like um, the worst scenario possible, you know. It's really just that you're pushing them right into your knee. Otherwise, you're getting kicked in the you're getting kicked in the groin, and then they still get a point taken away. So there's that, and then on the outside, it's just different. You're really just opening your hip and lifting your leg, you know, and making sure that you try and make contact with that little space right below your knee. So, Josh, at this fight, has it actually been announced to you as a title eliminator at all? Nope, has not. Uh, and also, just to follow up on that, like, what went into your decision, if you had one, to actually um, take this fight as opposed to waiting for Pettis to get back? Um, you know, what went into my decision for this fight was the fans. The fans when I was with Strike Force, and I'm getting at the end of my career, and as all these fans, all they've done while I was with Strike Force was talking about how they wanted me to fight Benson, Pettis, Nate, these type of guys, you know, because those are the guys that were – big names, you know, coming up when I was when I was in Strike Force, you know, fighting Gilbert over and over and over again. So I just thought to myself, you know, you know what, this is what the fans want, this is what the fans have always been asking for. You know, I, I was given the opportunity to fight for the title. That's really all I think I ever wanted was just to hear out of Joe Silva's mouth, like, hey, you're getting the title shot. I mean, that lets you know right there that you've made it to the big, you know, that you, that you were considered to be one of the best in the world ever, you know, and so... um that's something I can take to my kids, and I'm cool. So win or lose this fight or not, you know, I know that I was given an opportunity to fight for the title. It's good. I'm obviously looking forward to winning this fight, so then there is no there is no doubt whether I'm getting the next title shot or not. But there's so much in front of me between now and then. I need to focus on him. I need to focus on Vince. I need to focus on just getting past this fight. You know, it's been a long camp. You know, I was training for about four weeks for Pettis. I took yeah. a week off because I didn't have a fight. And then they called me while I was in Vegas at the GSP fight and said, hey, you know, let's get you fight. Let's get this fight with Benson. And I was like, yeah, let's sign it. So, you know, it's been it's been a long camp. I've had to kind of dial it back and then pick it up, dial it back and pick it up a couple times. Um, you know, I just hope it all turns out well because it's kind of been one of those camps that's lagged on so long. You're not really sure if you're in shape or if you're overdoing it or if you've underdone it because so much time has passed. Normally in like a full eight-week camp, you know, okay, look, I have this much time. I can go hard, go hard, go hard, you know, and you you kind of know your body and your routine. But it's been probably, I'd say, close to a 14-week camp with, like, one week off in the middle. So it's been a long camp. Yeah, it's like uh, Junior Dos Santos when he had peaked a little bit too early. Do you worry about that going into this fight at all because of this? No, I mean, I still have, I still have two more weeks, and I'm going to – I've I've done this before. Is what I'm probably going to do is dial it back on that last week and just do the rounds that I need to get done, the important stuff, and then just do my cardio at night. You know, making sure that I'm I'm getting my body well rested because I know that I know that I'm in shape. I know I mean I'm going with a fresh guy every round. Um, 
you know, for five rounds, and then I'm, you know, I'm hitting mitts for five rounds right after my rounds, and I'm able to grapple five rounds right after that. So, I mean, I'm doing 15 rounds, you know, in the just in the morning session, then I'm hitting mitts again in the evening, working on some drills and doing cardio at night for another, you know, hour and a half, two hours. So, I mean, I normally can tell when my body's in shape, you know, so I start to, you know, I, I feel really good right now. Everything feels good right now. Josh, you beat former title challenger Nate Diaz. You were scheduled to fight Pettis for the title. Now you're fighting former champ Benson Henderson. Uh, another guy just on the outskirts of this perennial title contenders is someone you're very familiar with in Gilbert Melendez. You guys had three fight of the year's uh, performances against each other. Do you see your paths crossing once again in the UFC? You know what? I really couldn't tell you. Um, I, you know, I know he's been. I know one of my teammates has been trying to get a fight with him, Habib. And um, so, if Habib gets that fight, I don't really see Gilbert and I really meeting up anytime soon. Um, it would be nice, that, you know, if we met at the title, you know, kind of thing. But um, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, like, I'm more focused on what I'm doing right now, and he's got he's got his he's got a lot of things ahead of him, you know. And, uh, and if, if it's Habib, you know, he's got his hands full. Who are you using in the in the gym to spar with? You mentioned Habib, but I know you have you have Gray Maynard. You know you've got a lot of talent in, in the AKA gym there in the lightweight division. Who's your main sparring partner for this fight? You know what's funny is um, I really haven't had a lot of guys to spar with. You know the holidays really people don't realize that the holidays are the worst time to take a fight. Your gym's empty. <laughs> There's just you can't get people in the gym. You can't get people there. My main my main training partner has been Luke Rockle. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so, cool. I mean, it's, it's it, it's it's cool and it's not because I mean I'm giving up a substantial amount of weight but but I mean it is good I mean we've been training a little bit a lot together you know obviously the last three weeks especially since it, basically from Thanksgiving to 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 Christmas it's been just dead in the gym you know I've had a couple of good guys that were in there you know and um, they've been working with me and stuff but no none of the none of the big names have really been in there helping right now uh, I believe Habib will be here this week. Um, and then, uh, you know, Gray actually's taking some time off. You know, he's, uh, he just bought a new house and everything. So he's getting, he's getting all moved into his house and, you know, just kind of getting situated with his life and getting ready to get back in and start training again. Uh, and then I had Tyson Griffin. Tyson Griffin just had neck surgery. So, uh, so basically a lot of, like all the, all the guys that I normally would use, they've been out a little bit. So it's, uh, it's been a rough, it's been a little bit of a rough camp. Like I said, it's been a long camp, but a little bit of a rough camp kind of thing. But uh, it's been it's been fine, man. I mean, I've, we've made things work. I've I've used a lot of up and coming guys, you know, to help me with this. And uh, we're gonna see what happens there. We're gonna give it a go. Well, Josh, you know, you mentioned something about leaving a little bit uh, a little bit behind here for your kids. You know, something that you know that they could look back on your career and be proud of. And and you know, we're we're transitioning into such a different age. Everything is digital. Everything that you do in your career, you know, eventually they're gonna be able to look and see. And, and you know, I gotta ask you because Joey brought up your fight against Nate Diaz, but that TKO was one of the most ridiculous I've seen in a long time. That video by itself should be enough to sustain a kid's interest in MMA fighting for at least a good 10 years. I mean, are you going to do anything special like put together a highlight reel and either say, this is what you want to do or this is what you don't want to do? I mean, how do you feel about that, you know, you know, for your kids? No, no, you're talking about this day and age. By the time I have kids, they're going to be talking about this day and age, and they'll still be addicted to video games. So the only thing I'll have to do is just show them me on a video game. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a fantastic point. You know, and that's something we I didn't actually get to ask, uh, you know, Luke about when, when he was on with us because he was on one of the cooler MMA video games that came out in 2010. I think it was uh, MMA Fighting. It was an EA Sports video yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, it was really, really awesome. It had great graphics, and, and I still love playing those things today. So, you know, what can I yeah. say? I'm, the, the one on the one through Strike Force. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah. Fedor yeah, we, on the cover. We were, we, were, we were both on it. Oh gosh, you know I have, I'm gonna have to go out and bring that one back. You know, you cycle through these games, take them back to the GameStop, and uh, I got to go back and get one because I, I remembered uh, him being on there. So uh, we got to take a break though, Josh. It, it's been great talking to you. Really, re- you know, good luck in your upcoming fight. Uh, again, that's you know going to be coming up uh, this uh, January 25th, UFC on Fox 10, Benson Henderson, and again, big challenge. But best of luck to you, man. We think you're gonna do great. All right, bud. Take it easy.